Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to upgrade the storage on my PC. I picked up a Samsung 970 EVO SSD or solid state drive and that is a two terabyte drive so that should give me some additional working space for me to manage my video files and um, some of these video games that I've been playing that can get pretty massive so hopefully running out of space won't be an issue for a little bit while longer and in addition to that I'm going to while I'm in there install these aluminum heat sinks that I picked up on Amazon the SSDs tend to put out a lot of heat on their own and these heat sinks will help alleviate that by helping them dissipate that heat into the air a little bit better um, and then as a result the SSDs themselves will run a little bit cooler and that I think will help in terms of reliability, longevity, and just overall performance. So let's get to it. So here is my PC system, which I bought from Build Redux. If you're not familiar with Build Redux, I did several videos about the purchasing and user experience. So check those out if you want to learn more about my system and about Build Redux. I know a lot of people had questions about the system and how much it costs. All that stuff was covered in my earlier videos. The main thing to know about it for the purposes of this video is that it's got an ASUS motherboard, the ASUS Prime Z490P, and the Z490P board has two slots for M.2 SSDs. One is above the slot for the graphics card and one is below. So you can see here, I've got a Lexar SSD already installed in the M.2 slot. That is the primary C drive that came with the system, and that is a one terabyte SSD. So it's got Windows installed on it, and it's the boot drive. Then if you look above the GPU, this is the second M.2 slot. So that's where I will install the new Samsung SSD. Now, I am a little bit concerned about this small Wi-Fi card that I have installed here. It sits pretty close to the upper M.2 slot, and while it has a cutout to accommodate the typical M.2 SSD, what I'm worried about is that with the heatsink attached, it might not clear the card or at least make installing it a little bit tricky. I'm going to do a test fit, but I might have to remove the card in order to have room to put this heatsink in. We'll see whether or not I have to do that in a bit. But first, let's take a look at the heatsink and talk through how it works with the SSD. So here's the heatsink. It's made of aluminum, and as you can see, it's made to fit exactly around the M.2 SSD. It's got two pieces that sandwich the SSD and the kit I got provides these blue colored conductive gel pads that stick to both sides of the SSD. And this part is like the under tray. And this part goes on top and is the main part of the heat sink. Has lots of surface area on it so that it can dissipate the heat coming off of the SSD. So here is the Lexar SSD that I pulled out of the motherboard and you can see that it fits snugly within the under tray of the heatsink. So now I'm peeling the film off of this conductive gel pad, and that can be a little bit tricky because it's super thin and it kind of helps to have uh, a bit of a long fingernail here so you can peel this thing off. So anyway, the instructions that come with the kit are pretty self-explanatory but once you get the conductive gel pads peeled off you can stick them on both sides of the SSD you put them into the under tray and then you put the top piece of the heat sink on top of that so you make a little heat sink sandwich with the SSD in the middle okay once you've got everything together you tighten the screws that hold it all shut and then you've got everything together and you're ready to 
insert the SSD back into the motherboard. So this is the C drive SSD that went under the GPU. So I just insert it back where it came from. The M.2 slot has a light spring action to it that pops the card out a little bit and you need to use a small screw on the other end to hold it down and in place. Thankfully, the heatsink kit I bought includes a tiny screwdriver that works perfectly with the original screw. And that's it. The first heatsink is now installed with the SSD. And on to the new SSD. Here is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. It's the same size or form factor as the other drive. And so this one we're going to install in the upper slot. Okay, so first I wanted to just test fit the SSD by itself into the slot and just make sure that it clears that Wi-Fi card on the left side. And it does seem like a little bit of a tight fit. You can see that when the spring pushes the SSD up, it actually does come into contact with that Wi-Fi card a little bit. And now I'm just gonna check the fit of the heatsink here as well. And again, it's a little snug. It's a little tricky to get it around that Wi-Fi card. But I think it can fit. You might not have to remove the Wi-Fi card after all. Okay, so I have installed the heatsink around the second SSD, same as the first one. Pretty straightforward. And tighten the screws on that, and we're all set. And it took a little bit of maneuvering, but I managed to get the heatsink and the SSD into place over here behind this Wi-Fi card. So, got it to fit. Getting that last screw in to secure the SSD and the heatsink into place was a bit tricky and had to try it a few times, but finally I smartened up and realized that if you just flip the whole case on its side, that makes it a lot easier to let gravity help you. Okay, well that took a little bit longer than I expected, so I kind of ran out of light, but so now I'm using a flashlight to show you what I've done. I've managed to install the heat sinks and the SSDs onto the two M.2 slots on the motherboard, and we are done here. So let's hook the PC back up and we'll see if it works. Okay, moment of truth. Ooh. There we go. NVMe number two, Samsung. Success. All right, computer is back on and it looks like the computer booted okay. So the C drive is nominal. But let's see if the new drive is being recognized. When I powered up the PC and went into the BIOS, the new Samsung drive was immediately detected, so that was perfect. However, once Windows started, the drive was not showing up in the Windows Explorer. So I went to the control panel and opened the disk management tool. From there, I could see that the drive was detected, but it still needed to be initialized. 
on my system it showed up as disk zero and I had to right click on it and choose initialize or format. At that point, it also let me give the new drive a name. And so I give you Cougar Drive on E. Welcome to the family, Cougar. Once the heat sinks were installed, I was of course curious to see how much of a difference they made in the SSD's operating temperatures. I don't have a screenshot of it, but before I installed the heat sinks, I had tested the Lexar SSD by running Call of Duty Warzone and playing a match. According to the HW Info monitoring tool, the SSD reached a maximum temperature of 62C. And now, after installing the heatsinks and running a similar test, the Lexar drive reached maximum of 56C. So 6 degrees cooler. That is a significant improvement. Okay, well, as you can see, the system is back up and running and seems to be working just fine. I've got the new hard drive, or I should say SSD, installed along with the aluminum heat sinks, which, as I've showed you, help dissipate the heat and keep the system running just a little bit cooler. So that's great. I would say it's a successful upgrade and we're ready to get right back to what we were doing before, which is making more video content and enjoying the video games that I play. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you as always for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. I'll see you next time.